Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm so excited to be here live. I have had it with the virtual stuff already. I just love being live. And this is actually the first live presentation I have done since all of this happened, however long ago. So this is, it's so great it to be like back. Forever. It does, doesn't it feel like it's been 10 years? I mean, it's only been, I mean, it really hasn't been that long, but yeah, it just, it's great to, to be, there's nothing like live and in person. And I don't know about you, but I never realized how much I need people around, <laughs> you know, until you don't have it. And then you're like, I miss people. You know, it, it, being at home is great, but, people it just it's so important that human connection so I you know when Megan invited me to come and speak you know there were several things I could have talked about and I said oh I would love to talk about the seven pillars of healthy eating which goes along with our Club FX program through Heinen so as as Megan mentioned I am the dietitian for Heinen's grocery store and I work hand in hand with Dr. Todd Pesek who is Heinen's chief medical officer um, for Heinen's grocery store, which I don't know if you know, but like there's no grocery store in the country that we know of that employs a chief medical officer. So it's it says a lot for the Heinen's brothers to have invested in that resource. They invested in him 10 years ago and me about maybe eight years ago, uh, that they are so vested in wellness. And, you know, not, not just from a sell wellness products type end, but more in the education, which is what Club FX is, is more of the educational piece for well-being and, and health and well-being for, you know, for our customers. We've always had wellness departments, but we really wanted to educate customers and, and provide that information you know, from both Dr. Todd and myself so that you know, we could you know, clear the air and separate you know, fa fact from fiction. And, and there's a lot of information out there. And so how do we drill it down to what we feel is the most important? There's a lot to know. Um, and you don't have to know it all. So we, we really try to make it simple you know, with, our, with our Club FX and, and the seven pillars. And I'll go through them today. I'm sure you've seen this quote before. And if not, I just think, gosh, how brilliant was Hippocrates? He was the, mo the father of modern medicine. He said many, many, many years ago, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And that's actually a quote that we have on our wall at our personalized nutrition center because we really believe that, you know, the grocery store is the pharmacy of the future. Most people that I know, they're not looking to to be on more drugs. <laughs> they want to learn what they can do with food to help heal their body or at least lessen their risk of disease. And, and that's, that's what we do through Club FX is we educate on, you know, we don't say throw away your pills and just, you know, eat broccoli because, you know, that's irresponsible. But there is so much power in food and, and we have seen it, you know, firsthand through our coaching, through Dr. Todd's experiences, food truly is medicine. And that is really the, the overarching theme of our Club FX program. So what it's built on, when, when we say food is medicine, you know, okay, so what does that mean? So I like to call it your, you know, everybody has an optimal, what I call an optimal health potential. We all have potential for well-being. Our bodies are resilient. And, and so what do I mean by that? Well, people think I'm weird, but whenever I get a cut on my hand or I skin my knee or something, I love to watch the process of healing. You know, so like I got a little, I burned myself on my stove, you know, um, making it wasn't tofu, but it was a stir fry or something. I had one of those really big cast iron skillets. It got really hot and like touched the side of it. And I, but my point is, you know, it didn't take long until you know I started watching the the process of healing. You know, it it got blistery and then it you know it healed and the, and then a scab formed and all of these things and and I just look at that whole process and I say. Gosh, my body knows what to do. I mean, I have to just keep the bandage on it and keep it clean, but it knows what to do. And that's, that's how I look at the human body. It really is resilient. It really wants to be well. And it does this through the process of what we call homeostasis. It's the body's 
way of always wanting to get back to baseline or to well-being. And if we feed it well, if we put that bandage on and we keep it clean, our body will inch towards well-being. It's just, it's like it's the law. It's not to say you're never gonna have a medical problem, but I've seen it firsthand, and maybe you have seen it, you've experienced it in your own lives, where you know you start making better choices, food choices, you start exercising. This is common January 1st for a lot of people, and you start feeling better, and you start, you know, you know, your skin starts looking better, your energy level goes up, and maybe your blood markers, your blood sugar goes down, and your cholesterol, and all those good things start happening that is homeostasis in action it's your body saying yes I love this keep going and and some of us do and others just try to go all in and kill themselves at the gym and then they say forget this I can't do it and then they give up that's my mother that's a whole other, I could do a whole other program on my mother and how I've struggled with her over the years but it's true. I mean, I, it's, it's your body. I always say your, your body wants to be well in the worst way, and it will inch towards well-being if given the opportunity. And so that's, that's, again, what these pillars are about. So what is FX? In line with everything I've said, you know, when you think of RX, that's your drug prescription. Instead of FX, or RX, we think of food as the prescription. Again, we're not telling you to throw away your medications. We're saying food can be used as medicine, and it should be. Why not? You know. And, and before I go any further, I'm not saying you gotta visit Heinen's Wellness Department and stock up on all of our supplements, and that's the way to get well. No, I'm talking about when you first walk in any grocery store, the first department you see is the produce department, right? That's what we're talking about when we're saying food is medicine. It's that. Yes, supplementation has its place, but you can never, ever, ever supplement your way out of a poor diet. You just can't. I wish I could tell you you could just take a list of supplements and everything would be great, but that's just expensive urine if you're not eating healthy, right? Or at least trying to make better choices. So food is the prescription, so it's FX. So that's that's what Club FX is. And, and it's a free program. I have to say it's not something we charge for. It's a free program for all of Heinen's Tasteful Rewards uh, members, who which Tasteful Rewards is our free rewards program. And what the perks are for Club FX you get weekly nutrition tips and recipes through email um, from both myself and Dr. Todd and exclusive product discounts which are Club FX approved so these may be certain produce items and you'll always see like the little cards next to the items that are Club FX uh, specials and even rewards so we're doing either monthly or every other I think they're going to try to do this monthly where we do specific dollar amounts off of certain products just you know for the Club FX members um, and again it's free to join and what most people don't know is that each and every one of our stores with the exception I should say of our chagrin store chagrin falls store has a um, wellness consultant staffed in our wellness department and their job is to help you make better choices answer questions and they're there to uh, meet with you one-on-one -on -one for free and you can make an appointment with them so that's all part of what you can access through Club FX and again this is all an online thing but we also label things in the store that are Club FX approved as well and then there are some paid services, and that's where you may work one-on-one -on -one with uh, one of our dietitians, which I say one of our dietitians, there's only two of us. So it's either myself or Abby. Uh, we don't have this big staff of dietitians, but those that want to go a little bit deeper and they want to have more of a coaching relationship with goal setting, we do offer that as a service as well. But that's that's through the um, Personalized Nutrition Center. So it's, you know, it's, um, but it's, it's there if you're interested. So, we have what we developed as these simple guidelines to healthy eating, and we call them the seven nutrition pillars. Um, this is the foundation of everything that we speak about in Club FX. We really try to make this simple, and they're all in the pamphlet, so you don't have to write anything down, but I just wanted to kind of go through the, the more of the why we chose these pillars, and, and they're not really gonna be news to you, I'm sure. Some of them may be, but you know, for me, I have to know the why, like what's in it for me? Don't tell me to eat chia seeds. I wanna know why <laughs> I should eat chia seeds, because who's just gonna sign up to eat chia seeds, right? If you know 
the benefit, it, it's a lot, you, you have more of an incentive to, to try those things and try recipes that include them. And that's one of the things with our, all of our Club FX recipes, they incorporate these ingredients and they show you what to do with them. Because yes, chia seeds might be great, but what do I do with them? I've known people that, you know, I tell them, eat more beans and lentils, and they, they have the same bag of lentils sitting in their cupboard for like two years because they're like, well, I don't know what to do with it. Like, this is great, but what do I do with it? I don't want to make soup. What do I do with it? So that's what we do with our recipes. Like, for example, we have some coming up in um, Feb uh, March that specifically focus on key cardiovascular components, and we take res we make recipes that um, incorporate these ingredients. So we have one for a chocolate uh, put chocolate chia seed pudding, which is made with avocado and cacao, and um, a little bit of maple syrup, and and it tastes like a chocolate pudding except it's dairy free and it's actually good for you. So there's a lot of things, you know, it has to taste good, right? You, these cannot be recipes that I always use my mother as an example. If my mom won't eat it, I know most people probably won't. She's picky and I test a lot of this on her and if she turns her nose up, I'm like, okay, maybe it needs to be doctored up a little bit, but they have to be, they have to be palatable and, and taste good. And that's one of the things that our recipes are, um, is pretty tasty. So the seven pillars answer the question, really, how should we be eating? It's not necessarily the what, but it's the how. And so these pillars are the first one, not surprising, but we think this is the most important. Eat your greens, as many as you can, every day. The second one is eat the rainbow. We learned this in kindergarten. Eat fruits and vegetables, um, or at least one fruit and two veggies every day. We always say more vegetables than fruit because of the glycemic load of, of vegetables versus fruit, especially people who you know struggle with blood sugar management. We, we tell them, you know, fruit's great, but it also can contain sugars that can impact your blood sugar negatively. So you have to be you know, mindful of that. Berries are awesome. I'll talk a little bit about them, but you know, they're almost anti-glycemic, which means that they support your blood sugar in a good way. Um, so anytime you can get your hands on berries over any other fruit is what I, I'm a, vote, a big vote for that. Um, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, frozen cranberries, finding a way to get those in your smoothie or you know, in your in your Hot cereal. I've been making a, um, and it's it's on our website. It's called the Superfoods um, Flax Meal Cereal. It's using fla ground flax seed with a little bit of almond milk, and then it's got um, some toppings. And one of the toppings I use are, are frozen cranberries that I thaw out. And oh my God, talk about a wonderful. A wonderful dish that's good for blood sugar. It's warm. It's great for winter time. It's on. It's on our website, and you could look it up there. But just finding ways to get these really deep colored berries in to get all those antioxidants. So the second pillar is is the rainbow. Third is dose with omega three fats every day, and I'll explain what those are. Pick your protein. Choose plants over fish, over fowl, over beef. We are not saying you have to be a vegetarian or a vegan for that matter. I, I am not a vegetarian or a vegan. I was a vegetarian for many years and then um, I was an unhealthy vegetarian <laughs> and I wasn't a happy vegetarian. I was always hungry because I wasn't doing it right. I mean, I was doing it incredibly wrong, you know. But once I started adding a little bit of protein in my diet in the right way, I started feeling better. You know, so for me that works and we're not saying you have to be a vegan. Dr. Todd is a vegan and you know, he promotes a, a pure plant-based diet, but we realize that, you know, that's not for everybody. Nor or should everybody do that if it doesn't work for your body? That's one thing I want to say is every body is different. So what works for me may not work for you, but what we can all agree on is we all need to eat more plants. I mean, that, that most, most people will not argue with that, that we, plants are our key for a healthy diet. Um, whether you choose to eat animal products or not, we show you how to do it healthfully. Uh, fifth pillar is choose whole grains, preferably sprouted. We'll talk about what that means. Then remember functional foods, fresh herbs and fermented foods. Functional foods are those foods that offer benefit above and beyond just basic nutrition. So these are where your antioxidant rich, really interesting foods come into play. And many of these you probably already do and you don't even realize that you're doing such a good thing. 
And then the seventh one sort of puts it all together and it says just watch your sugar and salt. We're not telling you eliminate salt and sugar because I'll tell you, I'm not one to say get rid of salt completely because it's been demonized, it really has been. Salt in processed foods, yeah, not good, but regular, we need salt in our body. We don't need thousands and thousands and thousands of milligrams like we get in processed food, but it's an essential mineral that we need for our body for electrolyte balance. So we shouldn't eliminate it but it should be something that if we were eating a wholesome diet without processed foods, um, salt has a place. A little bit is okay. But what, when we say minimize, you know, salt, watch your salt, it's just watch those processed foods, you know? That's, that's not news. And then, of course, added sugar. There's sugar in fruit, there's sugar in vegetables, there's sugar in natural foods. We're saying the added stuff, you know, adding white sugar to things, and, and that's what we're talking about. Or products that have sugar in them, which are rampant. I mean, you know, all you have to do is look at a nutrition label and you're like, I had no idea bread has sugar in it. And I didn't know that salad dressing has sugar in it. And I mean, it's in everything. And so I, it's crazy. It's kind of unnerving. I get upset. I'm like, why are they putting this in salad dressing? They don't need sugar in salad dressing, but to make it palatable, right? Your peanut butter, your Jif peanut butter, which really isn't peanut butter. I'm sorry. I know it's so delicious, but it's not peanut butter. It's peanut spread. Peanut butter is what? What? Yes. Almond butter is almonds. A little bit of salt's okay in there if it happens to be in there, but you know, Jif and the Peter Pan and all that stuff, you know, the stuff that you could just eat spoon after spoon after spoon. The reason you could do that is because of the sugar in there. So these food manufacturers, these industries, they know what they're doing when they put sugar in the food. They know it's addicting, right? And so you want more and more of it. And so that's why they put it in there. Um, so don't fall victim to that because it's easy to do. The FX100, which you have in that pamphlet, we have it all in, it, it, what this is, is it answers the question, what to eat? Now, there are many more foods that are considered FX approved than those 100, but we could only, I think there's 111 in there or something. We could only fit so many, and we didn't want to give you a list of 500 <laughs> foods. That's overwhelming. So when you look at the produce in there, it doesn't mean that bananas aren't good, and apples aren't good, and pears aren't good. We had, you know, we had, our produce department, everything's good, right? Produce in any any grocery store you go, it's all good. But we just wanted to kind of give you the best of the best. I eat an apple a day, okay? And, and that's, you know, it's not to keep the doctor away, but <laughs> I mean, it does though. Did you know that apples are like one of the highest sources of quercetin, which if you pay attention to things that with immune health, quercetin is that, um, that, that pigment that's found in the skins of apples that is incredible incredible for our immune system. And they actually say that it, it helps with longevity. So an apple a day really does keep the doctor away. Just don't peel that apple because that's where the quercetin is. This is that list of 100 foods to support the pillars. And not only does it include the fruits and the vegetables and the greens, but it also gives you those functional foods, gives you lists of um, superior meats and seafood and plant-based proteins and grains. You're not gonna see processed plant-based foods in there. Morningstar burgers, that garbage, I'm sorry, it is just garbage. Um, when you look at that stuff and you see an ingredient list that long and there's so much stuff in there that you don't know what it is, at that point, I'm just gonna eat a piece of meat because I don't know what that is. And I used to eat that stuff thinking I was being good, you know, I'm like, but it's really not. There are veggie burgers out there that, that are worthy, uh, but, but the ones, those frozen ones that have those ingredient lists that you, you don't even know what the, half the ingredients are, I wouldn't spend the money on it. There are some, if you, if you follow a plant-based diet, one of the new ones on the market, which I love, and it's easy to remember, it's in the frozen food, at least at Heinen's we sell in our frozen food, it's called the No Bull Burger. And it's made by a mom in, I don't know where she lives, she's in the United States someplace, but she created this burger for her family because she said she was tired of the processed stuff out there. And so you look at the ingredients and you see things like lentils and like real food and it's all put together in a burger. That's the kind of burger I wanna eat if it's gonna be a veggie burger, not a, you know, a pressed together thing that looks like meat and I don't know what it is. So when we say plant-based, you know, we, we 
highlight things like that, but also natural plant-based foods like you know tofu is fine, um, tempeh, which is a fermented soy product that is used that many people in Japan eat. It's a fantastic plant-based food. Um, you know beans and lentils. That's the kind of plant-based we talk about when we when we um, encourage plant-based proteins. So this idea of greens. When, when people, th when you think greens, what do you think of, like in terms of a meal? Salad. Salad, right? And we usually think of salads as like health food and boring and, but you know, and salads are great. I mean, I think they're amazing. You can do so much with it, but we like to encourage people to, to branch out, to use the greens that you see all the time and you might not know what to do with them, like Swiss chard. You know, we want Swiss chard to get more love because it's such a great green, you know, using them in, in soups and stews and, and they wilt or, you know, stir frying them up and getting them to wilt and folding them in your eggs, you know, in the morning. I mean, great ways to use these greens. Um, traditional greens like romaine are fine and spinach are fine, but, you know, branch out and, and you know, dandelion greens and all kinds of things. So why greens are so important and why we recommend eating as many as you can every day, don't make yourself sick over it, but eat a lot of greens, is because they are the most nutritious foods, pound for pound, calorie for calorie. They have the most nutrient dense nutrient density uh, per, per amount than any other food. So the amount of nutrition it offers for the calories it provides is what we call nutrient density. It is explosive in greens. So when you get greens, you know, you, whatever you're eating, even if it's just a little bit of salad, you're getting so much nutrition in there and so many um, detoxifying properties to greens due to chlorophyll, which is the pigment in greens. So it, it really is worth getting at least a serving or two of greens every day for that reason alone. You don't have to get them just in salads. You can, you know, make smoothies. One of my favorite things to do, even in the winter, is to make smoothies and throw a handful of either fresh spinach or fresh kale, or sometimes I'll throw arugula in my, in my um, smoothie, or even purple cabbage, okay, <laughs> in my smoothie, a little bit. You don't wanna go too much with that because then it starts tasting like a cabbage smoothie and that's not good. <laughs> or even greens powders. A lot of people will say, well, I live by myself and I don't wanna buy these greens, what do I do? We sell greens powders in our wellness department and a scoop of greens in a smoothie, blend it up, it's literally greens in dehydrated form. So you can do that as an alternative. But it's really easy. What we recommend is eat a salad as a side dish with your dinner um, every day, or make that you know the make that your appetizer. It's just a great way to experiment with different kinds of greens. And then once a week, what we do in our house is we make the salad the main meal. And you know, people are like, "How do you get full off of that?" If you've ever seen one of my salads, you'd be like, "Wow." It is just, it's full of different kinds of greens. Then I'll put some sprouts on it. Then I put some toasted nuts on it. Then a scoop of beans. Then I put my, may put a nice piece of like a grilled salmon on it. And I drizzle some olive oil. And I'll put some berries on it. So I get all the pillars in one meal. And it's amazing. It's satisfying. And you just feel so good after you eat that. And then what chlorophyll is, is it's that pigment, but it's, it's, it has that, those antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties which help fight disease. Anytime we talk about anti-inflammatory or antioxidant, inflammation is, and you probably hear this, and I'm probably not the first person to ever have, have said this, I'm sure, but inflammation is not the inflammation that happens, you know, when you burn yourself on the stove. The, inflammation we're talking about that is the disease causing kind is called chronic inflammation and that is at the root chronic inflammation is at the root of almost every disease in in the, the western world diabetes heart disease cancer the root is 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 this chronic inflammation and it's your body's immune system. What it is is your body's immune system gets turned on, it gets aggravated by something and usually it's um, our lifestyle choices. You know, it's, it's our diet, it's our you know, lack of exercise, it's pollution, it's all kinds of things. But it's our, a response from our immune system that doesn't turn off. So whereas 
we get the little cut and our immune system does its thing. That's called acute inflammation. It's our body saying, okay, got an injury, need to heal it. The chronic kind is immune system kicks up to an injury that we don't see, but the injuries in the inside due to our lifestyle choices. And so when we say eat greens, that's the why, because it lowers that chronic inflammation. It helps to kind of neutralize things out a little bit. So those are the greens. Again, there's so many of them, but, but those are the ones that you know are, are the, the top scorers. Most people look at spinach and kale and all that, but check out things like, you know, um, the microgreens. Microgreens are those mini greens that you would sprinkle on top of like an omelet or on top of your salad. It's not meant to be a whole salad, but they're very nutrient rich and they're just, they're real light and they're beautiful. They, they, they're, they're what you might find in a, in a restaurant on the top of like a, as a garnish, but they're amazing. They're so nutrient dense. Yeah, so those are your greens. Now the second is, the second pillar is that eat the rainbow. Um, the why behind this is, you know, when we talk about fruit, first talk about fruit, you know, I said if you're going to eat fruit, I, I'm a fan of all kinds of fruit, but I particularly love berries because of their gentleness on blood sugar. And anymore, you know, we all have to watch our blood sugar. I think that is one of the diabetes, prediabetes, or blood sugar, um, being on the cusp of that is one of those things that if we could control that, our health would be remarkable. And, and I tell people all the time, if you don't have diabetes, act like you have diabetes and you won't get diabetes. Because really what a diabetic diet is to me is not here, I'm going to give you a list of carbohydrates and you have to count them all day. No, it's eating right and balanced to keep our insulin levels balanced so that we're not spiking our blood sugar and our insulin all day every day and everything goes wonky. When we talk about fruits that are gentle on the blood sugar, berries are number one, which means it's fine to include them every day in a smoothie, on a salad. Blackberries, raspberries, cranberries, uh, blueberries, fantastic. Blueberries are um, high in resveratrol, which if, if you know anything about, it's also known as, as the, the antioxidant found in red wine, but you don't have to drink red wine to get it. You can get that in blueberries. It's important for blood flow. It's important for, of course, we know uh, brain health, um, but it's super important for heart health. Um, so get those berries in. Um, citrus fruits as well. When we, when we talk about fruit, citrus fruits are important. They're alkaline, which means they help balance the body's pH. Um, great source of vitamin C and minerals and fiber. So your citrus are going to be grapefruits, and of course oranges and grapefruits. But you know this citrus season, which has all of these different types of you know mandarins and these really incredible experiment with them. I mean because they're so different. Um, we have the Melissa's produce, which is you know they offer all these types of exotic produce. Um, citrus is one of them. You know so experiment with different types of citrus. B blood oranges are amazing um, in the fruit form versus the juice if you can um, I tell people all the time the first thing you do when you go to like let's say Bob Evans they slap some orange juice <laughs> right on that table and it's like if you want to spike your blood sugar first thing in the morning drink that orange juice down you'll start off with high blood sugar from the from the get-go eat the fruit in the whole form your body digests it slower um, I, I just don't like juice I'm sorry I mean it tastes wonderful but it just it just wreaks havoc on your blood sugar it does um, it does and smoothies that are made with juice and all this stuff it's like ah no juice should not be the basis of a smoothie that's too high in sugar it should be like a plant-based milk that's unsweetened and then you add your own fruit to it a little bit of berries and some greens and we've got some recipes on our website but you know a lot of these places where you'll go get smoothies Sure, they taste amazing, but if you ever look at the sugar content on that, it's like, oh, they taste delicious. So that's because there's like a pound of sugar from all that fruit and pulp that they're putting in there and juice. I know I'm probably not your favorite person right now. <laughs> Uh, and then stone fruits. Stone fruits don't get the love that they deserve. Stone fruits are any fruit that has the pit inside. So plums and apricots and nectarines and peaches. Those are amazing because of the bioavailability, meaning the, absor the availability, the absorbability of the nutrients in stone fruits. 
Um, great for the immune system, also vitamin C. So those are the ones, and Dr. Todd is very heavily involved in making this list. He said, stone fruits need to be on there. You know, cause I was like, oh, let's put apples and pears. They're more, you know, readily available. He's like, stone fruit, we've gotta put stone fruits on there. So yeah, they made it on there. Also on there are lemons. And you know, in, in addition to the other citrus fruits, lemons and limes. Not that you're gonna suck on a lemon or a lime and, or cut it up and eat it, but using that in your foods is amazing because of the ability to lower the pH and detoxify the body. So one of the best things you could do, you get up, you stretch, you brush your teeth, you go in your kitchen, take a glass, put a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice in there, fill it up with water, drink it down, 16 ounces when you first wake up. And why that's so powerful is we've been sleeping for seven, eight, maybe nine hours. We got all this sludge that's just been sitting in our bodies all night long. You get up, you drink that lemon juice down, and you, it starts to move things through. It starts to detoxify the body first thing in the morning. You're not gonna like it because at first you're like, oh, I gotta drink a glass of water when I first wake up. But we have been dehydrated overnight, right? We're sitting there and we're just dehydrated. We haven't drank anything for eight hours. We have to rehydrate, but more so get that, that, um, that lemon juice in there to detoxify the body. And if you have issues, bathroom issues, and things aren't moving like they usually, <laughs> they, like they used to, you start drinking that lemon water, things are gonna start moving. It doesn't have to be ice cold, it could be lukewarm. You could do it hot if you wanted, it'll just take longer to drink, but I do, I just do like a um, bottle when I first wake up. It's routine, at first I hated it, now it's just, it's just like brushing your teeth, you know, it's, it's amazing. So those are the fruits that, you know, that are listed on your, on your sheet, on your pamphlet there. And, and these can be frozen too, guys. These don't have to be fresh. I love the frozen fruits. If they don't have any added sugar, so the Heinen's line or any, you know, Dole, whatever. Um, especially during this time, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, you can get those all frozen. You can get um, cherries frozen. You can get peaches frozen. So use the frozen, start making smoothies or just defrost them and use them in your oatmeal. It can be very economical. And then we got our, our vegetables. Um, you know, anytime you see color in a fruit or vegetable, that pigment is called a phytochemical. And this is where the antioxidant activity comes alive. It's in the color. That's why we say choose fruits and vegetables with lots of color. Um, the more color, the better. Does not mean you should not give love to like cauliflower and onions and you know garlic because those are amazing. But we're saying you know we're saying don't just sit there and eat white potatoes all day. They're yummy, I know that. But how about some sweet potatoes? The more color, the better they are for you, generally speaking. Mushrooms are amazing. I mean, they're more of a fungus, right, fungi. But they're um, white mushrooms. Any kind of mushrooms are fantastic. They're in the functional food category because they've got special properties that are above and beyond just um, fruits and vegetables. So you have <clears throat> in your in your pamphlet there, we call the sweet 16 uh, veggies. And you know they're all listed there. And most people don't really think of you know, things like avocados as a vegetable, it's more of a fruit, but we, we use it more of a veg as a vegetable or a fat. Those are amazing. I tell people, eat an avocado every day in some way. Whether you are mashing it up and folding it in your omelet or putting uh, avocado slices on top of your salad or throwing a couple slivers in a smoothie or mashing it up and taking some sprouted crackers and eating, like making your own little guacamole. Avocados are a great source of, of good, healthy fats for our body and we need fat, so important. I do want to point out those cruciferous vegetables. Um, cruciferous vegetables are your broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage falls in that category. Um, those are super powerful cancer fighting vegetables. And so what I tell people, get a cruciferous vegetable in once a week, twice a week, um, if possible. The best way to do that, one of my meal planning strategies, I do it every single week. Sunday I do a little bit of meal prep, I chop up some vegetables. I always chop up broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. I put them in you know, freezer bags, stick them in the fridge, and the day of the meal, 
I put them on a tray and I usually put them in my air fryer, drizzle a little bit of avocado oil on them, a little bit of, of fresh um, Himalayan sea salt and pepper, and I roast them up and for about maybe 30 minutes at 350 degrees, and I put those on salads. That's the side for my salmon. Those are sides, you know, for, for everything. I mean, I use it as a side. Sunday, throw it in the omelet. That way you're getting those cruciferous vegetables in and you're doing it all at once, right? You're kind of batch cooking these vegetables. So if you cook them all at once, it's, it's easy then to just throw them into things, you know? Um, another thing most people don't think about, and, and I wanna try to use the little thing, but I keep shutting it off. There we go. Jicama, anybody have any experience with jicama? You do. I, you, you've got a lot of experience. I get to. Well, I'm on Weight Watchers, so I got to do anything. So you know, you know. Okay. Can, but yeah, I like the crunch of it. Oh. I get cut up. Hickama is amazing. So it's it's a like a root vegetable, and it looks like a rutabaga, and it's sort of like we sell it at Heinen's. It, you know, in the center aisles where you would find it next to like the peppers and the fresh turmeric and ginger and where the eggplants are. But there are these, you know, there's these big, they look like rutabagas. And what they are, are they're a crunchy, almost like a raw potato tasting, but tastes more like a water chestnut. And what you do, it, it, it takes some art to cut it, but did you, I think you can um, ask the produce department to cut it for you. I've, I've heard, yeah, don't say I said that, okay. but I've heard that they do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say Melanie said they say who's Melanie? <laughs> um, a little redhead said you'd cut this right up for me. But it's it's an amazing source of what we call um, resistant starch or a prebiotic fiber. And what that is is it feeds the good bacteria in your gut. It keeps the good bacteria thriving, which is very important. I could do a whole class on the microbiome and healthy bacteria. But it's actually food for the good bacteria. And if you're if you're our produce director his name is Vinny he's an Italian guy go figure right Vinny was telling me he goes Mel did you know that jicama is actually like it it tastes starchy but there's so much fiber in it that it's just basically all fiber so you can slice it up and you can what I another tip I recommend people to do is this once a week set up little mason jars or little you know um glad containers and put different types of raw vegetables in each one baby carrots um sugar snap peas cherry tomatoes sliced uh peppers right line up these little mason jars and just fill them up right one for each day and then in those oftentimes i'll add a few jicama slices because it makes it a little sweet and then you you grab one of those containers every day have it as a snack or as part of a meal and that's one surefire way you're going to get your vegetables in uh, because you know if you're hungry you're not chopping up vegetables i don't care who you are you're grabbing the chips that's what i I do. I'm not there chopping up <laughs> vegetables. If I'm hungry, I'm going to get the fastest thing I can. So if those are already there, you know, made up for you, grab one, eat it, and you've got your vegetables in for the day. And there's power in doing little things like that for our health because you've done one good thing for yourself and all of a sudden you're like, okay, so I might think twice before having the fries with my dinner. I might choose something. You, you've made a good choice and you kind of want to keep that momentum going. So it's just these little, these little hacks that you, you set yourself up and they really set you up for success. But that's where you could get in, in unique vegetables like jicama um, and, and just things that you might not get otherwise. And if you're, you're lazy like I am, visit the salad bar and take containers and throw, we chop up the vegetables and so use it that way, you know? Um, you could do that. I know people that I do that. Um, not all the time, because it can get expensive, but celery, all those things. Okay, so pillar three, this is where our omega-3 fats come in. Now, omega-3s are very unique because they are considered anti-inflammatory fats, okay? We've got pro-inflammatory fats, and we've got anti-inflammatory fats. Pro-inflammatory fats are those that kick up that inflammation in the body, anti-cool it down. So the rule is, you know, we've got these things called essential fatty acids, the omega-6s and the omega-3s. They're essential because our bodies don't make them, so we need to get them from food. So when we say omega-6s are essential, we do need them. But in the wrong amounts, omega-6s become inflammatory, okay? 
Omega-6s are found in like nuts and seeds naturally. That's not the problem. The problem is when we get omega-6s from highly processed industrial seed oils like canola oil, soybean oil, any kind of vegetable oil, which if you look at any processed food, you'll see those oils in there. And so where this becomes a problem is the more of these convenience foods that we eat with all of these omega-6 oils, we start to rack up all of these inflammatory oils and we don't even realize we're doing it because we're like, oh, we're just eating crackers. Well, those crackers plus that frozen meal plus that type of bread, all these omega-6s start to rack up and then we're in an inflammatory state and we didn't even know we were, we were doing this. So don't worry about the nuts and seeds. Those omega-6s are great, there's no problem. It's the, it's, that's where the processed foods come into play. So our ancestors used to eat one omega-3 to one omega-6 nice and balanced. Disease rates were so low. And then the boom of the processed food industry and the snack food industry come and they load everything with omega-6s. Now I'm not saying that that caused the increase in disease, but all of a sudden you see over the years that line going this way to where diseases were down here and all of a sudden they're here and what happened during that time is processed foods less cooking everybody go out and we get convenience everything's convenient and and when you boil it down and you really take a, a step back the big one of the biggest culprits are those omega-6s from those seed oils and all that processing um, so ancestors used to do one-to-one -one. now they estimate most Americans are on a 20 to one, 20 omega-6s to one omega-3. That's a problem. That's heart disease. That's, you know, that's cancer. That's a lot, and I'm not saying that, you know, Aunt Mary got cancer, you ate too many omega-6s. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying there is a link between inflammation and all of these diseases and omega-6s you know, contribute to that. They're like a fire that, li that light that inflammation up. So omega-3s are, are key. So let's talk about the good stuff. You know, our brain cells, if you've ever heard of DHA and EPA, those are your omega-3s. And our brain cells are actually made up of DHA. So if you think about it, we don't get these omega-3s. Our brains aren't getting the omega-3s. And that's, you know, we can see a lot of issues with depression, ADHD, um, which is that attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's a lack of these um, anti-inflammatory fats in our diet and it's, and it's affecting our brain health and our heart health. So what are these essential um, omega-3 fats? Now from nuts, seeds, and nut butters, there's a lot of them. You know, you get a lot of things, a lot of foods that have these omega-3s in them. I mentioned the chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, all those great nuts. Um, find a way, you know, find a way to eat nuts every day. Walnuts are great, almonds are great even if it's just a handful every day, if you're sprinkling them on your salad that you're eating you know, every day as a side. Um, if you're throwing a spoonful of fresh ground walnut butter or almond butter in your smoothie, that's another way to get it. You know, it's the same thing.
but there's all kinds of cuts that pre-beef all kinds of cuts from you know ground beef to you know whatever kind of cut you you can find it's it's their pre-packaged their individual portions which is great you know because it's already portioned out for you um, and then the dairy piece of this dairy and plant-based milks um, that are higher in omega-3s so it's again I'm not saying give up butter I would never give up butter I love butter but I'm going to spend a little bit of extra money on the grass-fed butter so this butter the Kerrygold or the Organic Valley is from cows that are fed grass versus grain so the butter is going to be higher in the omega-3s if anybody use Kerrygold butter oh there is nothing like it it's just it's just richer it's better it's the colors even better um, and if you're just using a little bit again invest in it um, and then the grass-fed milk same thing grass-fed yogurt um, pasture raised eggs there's a difference when you look in the egg department which is now a mile long <laughs> right you're like I thought, what happened to just eggs right so now you've got cage free and then you got traditional and you've got all these things but when you see pasture raised eggs the difference between cage free and pasture raised is that pasture raised eggs the hens are allowed to roam and be in their natural environment where they eat worms and they dust their feathers and they eat insects and they eat things that those that are in cages or even cage free don't have access to so again you're not only what you eat you're what that animal ate but you're also how that animal was treated right so if if and that's another thing I spend money on on pasture raised eggs um, or even duck eggs we now sell duck eggs have you ever anybody ever have a duck egg oh do you like them have you had you've no, had but you've had them used to raise oh and so you you had them just all oh my god they are is it safe to say or fair to say creamier right we sell them now at Heinen's. I'm sure they sell them other places, but they're in, in a pack of six. And they're bigger. They're like a monster egg. Right? <laughs> they're bigger. And you only need to eat one because they're bigger. But they're creamier. They're richer. They're just, they're, it's an experience. If you like eggs, get a duck egg. Um, and it's just cool to say you eat duck eggs. Like, you know, you feel like all fancy and everything. And then, you know, grass-fed cow and sheep cheese is another one um, in, not that you're going to get a ton of omega-3s that way but if you can get the grass-fed cheese um, that's even better we do sell some grass-fed cheeses um, at, at Heinen's sheep cheese and even goat cheese I, I like cheese and if you're sensitive to cheeses sheep and goat cheese is the way to go in my opinion um, you tend to be less sensitive to those you know those dairy is a little bit the proteins are different in sheep and and um, goat cheeses and then plant-based nut milks again th you're not going to get gobs of omega-3s that way but they they do are they are made with nuts so you get some yeah uh, so i don't know if this is under essential fats but when you're doing your cooking if you're not using the air fryer mm -hmm. what are you using like all i heard you mention avocado oil. are you using yeah. olive oil or what are you putting in the pan yeah, so when you're cooking, or what does that fall under? So the important oils are um, they're not necessarily falling into any one of these, but it's a good question. Um, my top oils are you know extra virgin olive oil, obviously. Right. Um, that is more for medium to low temperature cooking. So if you're roasting, I always use avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point oh. and it does not degrade or break down like um, other oils would. So, so avocado oil, um, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, I'm a big fan of coconut oil. Uh, yeah, big fan of coconut oil, has a higher smoke point so you can use a little bit and a little bit goes a, a really long way. Um, which those three, ghee ghee which is clarified butter um, that is on the list here grass-fed butter or ghee um, that is a, a it's a, a butter with the, um, the liquid removed so it's very um, decadent uh, we sell it in the dairy department and also where we sell the olive oils mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing but you, that's a higher smoke point as well so you can melt that and use it for roasting as well 
Um, so those are my favorite fats. Um, walnut oil is great too, but you know, for, for regular purposes, those are, those are my favorite. Um, coconut oil for baking is amazing too, really good. Okay, fourth one is, you know, we've kind of talked a lot about this already, the protein, plants over fish over fowl over beef. Um, this is where we want to choose more of the omega-3s than omega-6s. I already spent time on that. That's where we, the vote for grass-fed is, is really important. Um, incorporating those whole plant-based alternatives. Um, if we're doing fish, which I'm a big fan, cold water, wild, or sustainably farmed fish. Um, salmon is great. Um, doesn't always have to be wild, though. We have an amazing um, Verlasso salmon, which is a, um, and it's not exclusive to us. I've seen it at Whole Foods. I think I've seen it at Mustard Seed Market as well. Um, Verlasso salmon is farm raised, but it's very sustainably farm raised so that they're not overfishing and they're, they're actually feeding the salmon um, feeder fish. They're not, um, they're not, depleting the, the oceans of feeder fish. They're actually feeding it a, a diet that is high in omega-3 so that that farm-raised salmon is actually comparable to the omega-3s in wild salmon. Um, and it's a great taste as well. We also have a, a, a farm-raised salmon called 60 South, which is very affordable. It's fresh and it's a really good taste. Anybody have experience, mackerel wasn't on the list, but I'm a big fan of mackerel. Um, not so much even fresh, but the, but the canned mackerel is so good. Anybody have experience with that? It's a really high omega-3 fish, and we sell it right next to the tuna, and it's called like king something, uh, but they're, it's so amazing to throw that on a salad. It's a meaty kind of fish. It's um, not sardines. It's not like funny looking or anything like that, but it's a really good high omega-3 uh, omega fish, and that's called mackerel. Um, of course, I already talked about minimizing the portions, you know, um, and then cheeses, yes, eat them if you like them, but, you know, making sure that they're more of your sheep, goat, cow, grass-fed if you can. Plant-based cheeses are, are, are decent as well. Um, plant-based cheeses, you know, some people laugh me out of that, like, okay, what's a plant-based cheese? It's basically cheese that's made from um, nuts, like cashews or almonds. Um, we do sell them in our dairy department and in our special specialty cheese areas. Those are great if you're looking for a dairy a cheese alternative. So then your proteins, they're in your, they're in your pamphlet so I don't have to go through all of them, but um, your plant-based proteins are listed there. We do make a whole food plant-based burger fresh in our uh, meat department. I say, why do you merchandise these in the meat department? What vegetarians eat and going through the meat department? But they say a lot of people are what they call flexitarians anymore. They want the options. They eat meat, but they want to eat more plant-based, so they stick them in the, in the meat department. Um, quinoa is considered a, a plant-based protein because it, although it's considered a grain, it actually is a complete protein. So that's a great source of protein. Tempeh, we talked about tofu and all that good stuff. There's your fish and your fowl, of course, and your beef. And then your fifth pillar, which is your um, whole grains, what we call preferably sprouted. What sprouting means, it's just a simple way of saying that you're soaking the grain, that the, the manufacturer is soaking the grain or the seed or the nut until a sprout forms, and then they, they use that to make the product. Now, <clears throat> why sprouting is so important is because it sort of unlocks the vitamins and minerals in those in those grains, they're better absorbed and they're gentler, easier to digest and break down, especially for diabetics. So if between a sprouted bread and a non-sprouted, I would opt for the, the sprouted, like Ezekiel, um, Angelic Bakehouse, those are some of the brands of sprouted products. When you look at your pamphlet, your grains are going to be brown rice, quinoa, which True Roots is a sprouted um, quinoa. We have a sprouted uh, quinoa from True Roots. Steel cut oats are fine, wild rice, and then your sprouted breads, wraps, and crackers. Um, the Ezekiel line is found in the frozen department. Um, best bread out there. It's not soft and cushy. <laughs> it's 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 uh, heavy duty. It's it's a uh, you know it's not a wonder bread. <laughs> it's you can't take a nap on a loaf of Ezekiel <laughs> bread. Um, you'll probably like knock your eye out. It's it's got some muscle. And then even sprouted crackers, you know, with your cheese. There's a great cracker called Flackers. 
It's along, alongside all the other crackers. It's a seed cracker made from flax seeds, really great. It's really gentle on the blood sugar. And then there's another really good cracker called Mary's Gone Crackers. That's a, I know it's cute, easy to remember, but that's a sprouted cracker, it's, it's delicious. Okay, then the last one is your functional foods. And these, again, are those foods that offer uh, nutrition, uh, benefits above and beyond nutrition. These are important for inf um, reducing inflammation and, and mental clarity and resilience. These are gonna be your herbs and spices, which you're probably already doing, right? This is just a snippet of herbs and spices, but also includes fermented foods, key for feeding the good bacteria in our gut. Fermented foods are traditionally your sauerkraut, not the kind in the bag, the raw sauerkraut in the jar that you would find like in the deli department. These would be like your Cleveland kraut. There's a wake robin is another line. These are true live beneficial bacteria. Um, if you're not a, a sauerkraut eater, that's okay. You can get it through apple cider vinegar that you make into a salad dressing and, and dress your salad with it. That's another way to get these fermented foods. Plant-based yogurts, regular yogurt, unsweetened if you can. Um, kombucha, which is a nice um, kombucha, which would look like this. It's a um, fermented tea beverage and it's fermented so there's live beneficial bacteria in, in a bottle of kombucha. You either like it or you don't. Um, it's an acquired taste, so you might not want to start with this. Just make some really good salad dressing with apple cider vinegar and you'll be all set. And then chocolate. Chocolate is a functional food, not Reese's peanut butter cups. I'm sorry, I wish I could say that, but dark chocolate, 80% cacao, that's in intense, um, but anything 70% or above is actually considered medicinal. So when you get a really good chocolate bar, you'll see the percentage cacao on the front. The higher, the better, but also the higher percentage, the more bitter. So if you wanna start with like a 50% and work your way up until your taste buds get used to that, that's probably the way to go um, versus going from Reese peanut butter cup to 80% cacao, that's pretty <laughs> intense. But I have a square or two of dark chocolate every day. That's medicinal, <laughs> okay? It's a prescription uh, if you like it. And then if not, you could always use raw cacao powder, which we sell in our wellness department or cacao nibs. The cacao Cacao powder is cocoa powder, and you could use that, you know, in a smoothie. You could use it to make that um, chocolate avocado pudding. Um, it's a, there's many things you can do, and there's recipes on our website for that for that as well. And then more functional foods are mushrooms, tea, which matcha tea, green tea is like the best. If you could drink green tea, that's amazing. A cup of green tea a day is amazing. And then powders, this is more like, you know, if you're really looking for refinement, powders are like those, you know, condensed versions of like um, wheatgrass and all these things, these potions you might throw into smoothies, which I don't even do, but some people who wanna add some functional foods to their smoothies or their hot cereals, they might go that far, but um, mushrooms are key. Mushroom powders or fresh mushrooms as well. Um, shiitake is amazing, which is, is a more common mushroom that you would see, um, but you know that, that's a great um, immune boosting food. Mushrooms are, are fantastic. And then the last pillar kind of brings it all together. So basically the way I say uh, what pillar number seven does is if, if you are watching and you're at least trying to tap into some of these pillars and get more greens and more vegetables and you're plugging away, doing little by little, this pillar sort of takes care of itself because the more of these, these wholesome foods you're eating, the less of the processed foods you're eating. So this one sort of just takes care of itself. And, and I like to always wrap up by saying, you know, there's a few, there's five things I want, do I want to leave you with. So I gave you all this information, but I want you to remember that, you know, sometimes we get so excited about things, we want to just change everything. But human beings don't work that way. You know, food is personal and food is, it, it's a hard thing to go from, you know, eating a, a processed food diet or halfway all the way to just throwing everything out and just eating nothing but whole, that, that's a drastic uh, change and it's not sustainable. So small little changes are really gonna add up. Even if you do 
one thing. Like make those vegetables up and that's all you do. A vegetable container every day and you eat those vegetables. That's it. Keep doing that until it becomes habit. Then add something else to, to your routine. Um, I always think that this is a mental thing. Think addition rather than subtraction. And what I mean by that is don't think about taking things away. Think about adding to your diet. And the more you add, the more your taste buds shift. So there's nothing worse than me standing here telling you, you can't eat this, you can't eat this, you can't eat this, you can't eat this. You're going to discount everything I say. And what, what's going to happen is you're going to want those foods <laughs> all the more because I'm telling you not to eat them. So let's think addition versus subtraction. Eat more greens, right? Just find a way to eat more greens every day, even if it's just adding a side salad to your dinner. You don't have to make it the main meal. Snack wisely. If you snack, make those snacks count. Don't make them a candy bar. That's where you have a handful of walnuts, have a handful of berries, right? That's where you could, prime opportunity to get some of these really good nutrient-rich foods in. And then, you know, always think plants. That's something we can all agree on, right? We need more plants in our diet. How do we, how do we get more plants in our diet? Roast up a batch of, of those cruciferous vegetables on a Sunday and add them to your foods. Do it once and you could eat them for the week. Heat them up. And that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, this is a great crowd.